Hi, I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Storymakers. Today we welcome back Susan Verdi, the author of I Am Me. Welcome, Susan. Thank you, Rocco. It's great to be here on Storymakers. You're looking wonderful. I love your scarf and your sunglasses. I uh, thank you so much. I'm just expressing myself. And it seems that you've been inspired by the character on the book with the scarf and the glasses. And that character was created by the fabulous illustrator Peter Reynolds. Tell us about the story. Sure. I'm actually going to take off my glasses to tell you. And I could look you in and the we eyes. We can see each other <laughs> yes. now. I Am Me is a story about celebrating exactly who you are with all of your special qualities, differences, the things that make you unique and beautiful. Just a big celebration of that. The book has a subtitle. It says, A Book of Authenticity. So authenticity, what does that mean? Authenticity means being exactly who you are, living as you are, not worrying about what other people think or upsetting anyone else. It's just being true to yourself. As the author, you're responsible for the words in the book. And I enjoyed your use of words like move and groove and perfectly imperfect. Those are some of my favorite ones too. Uh, I also love joy and spark. Words serve many purposes and help us find out who we are and what makes us unique. Yes, exactly. Um, words help us describe ourselves. Maybe you can decide what makes you perfectly imperfect. Right. I have an idea. Why don't we ask the viewers to get a piece of paper and put a word down that describes how they're unique. Or how they're perfectly imperfect or how they find their spark. Why don't we do it first? Okay, let's do it. I just happen to have a pen and a piece of paper. Well, we both have our words. We do. What is your word? My word is hopeful. Every day I could look at this word and remind myself that I can be hopeful, that things can get better and things are good. You're hopeful and I am happy. I am happy or I should be happy. Love it. Why don't you write a word down, put it on your mirror or fold it up and Put it in your pocket. Love that idea. But always remember that word. Speaking of writing, you have written another book. Sally B writes a thank you Ooh, note. That reminds me, it's time for a costume change. And this one. The scarf that Sally That's B. That's right, like a bumblebee. Yes. Tell me about Sally B and this thank you note. This is a book about a couple of things. One is writing thank you notes because sometimes people send texts instead of remembering to write a thank you note and who doesn't love to get a thank you note. But the other thing this book covers is about being thankful and grateful for things that aren't stuff. Things that people do, uh, sharing or kind gestures or things like that. And if we look around the world, there are so many things to be thankful for that aren't always things, stuff that you might get. And there are a few examples of thank you notes in the book, aren't there? That's right, that's right. Sally writes a lot of thank you notes. She thanks the crossing guard for making her feel safe. Mm -hmm. She thanks the lunch lady for making her favorite food. And she also thanks her brother. Right, that's right, about Cuddles. Oh yes, Cuddles is her brother's tarantula. Well, Sally thanks her brother for not putting cuddles into her desk, dresser, or bed. I can see why. I would be thankful, too. Bye, cuddles. I see other names on the cover of the book besides yours. Can you tell us who they are? Yes, there are other names. The first name is Courtney Scheinmel, and she is an author, and she is my co-writer on this book. It's the first time I've written a book with another author, and it was a wonderful experience. And the other name is Heather Ross. She's the one who illustrated the book. She drew all the pictures, even cuddles. Ah, and in the back of the book, you actually have a guide to writing a thank you note. I can read you what the steps are. The first thing you need to do is decide who you are writing to. 
The second thing you need to do is tell that person exactly what you are thankful for and why. And then say how it makes you feel. Sign your name and give the note some style, maybe some swirlies. And then as we talked about before, write the person's name and address on an envelope and put a stamp on it and maybe put your return address and send it on its way. Why don't we write a thank you note? I just happen to have a thank you note, envelopes, and one of the fun things about thank you notes is selecting a stamp oh, to put stamps. on them. I love those. That would make your thank you note very unique. I'm going to write a thank you note to the viewers. And I am going to write a thank you note to my daughters. Let's do it. Dear viewers, thank you for watching this show. It feels so nice to know you love books and the people who create them. I know Cuddles is thankful too. Happy reading. Love, Susan. You want to know what I wrote? Yes, please. Well, I wrote this to my daughters. Dear daughters, thank you for being my daughters, especially now that you are mothers and sharing so many kid-lit books with my grandchildren. Love, Dad. And the next step is to put it in the envelope. Well, let's do that. Okay. And now we can put the name of the people or the person it's going to and their address and our return address and, of course, a stamp. And a stamp, yes. And don't forget to close your envelope oh. with the sticky part, oh. right? So your that card doesn't do that. fall out. Mm. Mm. What stamp are you going to put on? Oh, I love the Lunar New Year stamp. And I am going to put on a Bugs Bunny stamp. Oh, I love it. We now have to go and find a post box. But Susan, it's been so nice for you to be here today and to show us how to write a thank you note. Wow, I've enjoyed every minute and thank you for having me and thank you for letting me write thank you notes. Yes, it was fun. It was fun. Remember, until next time, read a book in any format.